Okay, this, uh, this lab is about the different types of chemical reactions and how to write and balance chemical equations for them. The five types of chemical reactions we've learned so far are synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, double replacement, and combustion reactions. And in this lab, we'll see an example of each and we'll practice predicting the products and balancing those equations. Uh, the first reaction we're going to see is a reaction between uh, iron 3 nitrate and potassium chromate. So these are the two solutions. They're both clear solutions. Uh, and when we put them together, we'll see a reaction take place. So this is the iron 3 nitrate. It has a slight orange color, but it's uh, transparent. And then the potassium chromate is the yellow solution, but it's also transparent. And we pour the two together, and you see it gets cloudy and it's no longer transparent. So those solid particles that are forming, uh, that's part of a precipitation reaction or a double replacement reaction where you mix together two solutions of uh, ions and the ions get together and form an ionic compound that's no longer soluble in water and they precipitate out of the solution. So you can see it's no longer transparent. Uh, our second reaction is one that everyone's probably seen before. It's a reaction of paraffin. Paraffin is more commonly known as wax. So this is just a candle, and we will ignite the candle with a match. And now paraffin will react with oxygen in the air in a combustion reaction. In a combustion reaction, the products are going to be carbon dioxide and water. So the paraffin, which is a hydrocarbon, reacts with oxygen and makes carbon dioxide and water. Uh, our third reaction is going to be a reaction between silver nitrate. So this is silver nitrate. It's a colorless solution. Uh, silver nitrate is soluble in water. And then we're going to add to that a piece of copper metal. So this is a piece of copper wire and I'm going to drop the copper wire into the silver nitrate and you can see pretty quickly that the copper starts to get a blackish color on the outside. That blackish color that's forming on the outside of the copper is actually silver coming out of the solution and becoming solid silver. The copper is slowly dissolving and becoming part of the solution. And so it looks like the copper is turning black and growing. What's actually happening is the copper is dissolving and the silver is coating the outside of the copper, therefore making it look larger. Uh, I have one of these that I started a few minutes ago, and over time it will start to look like this. So on this one, you can see that a lot of silver has come out of the solution. You can see these big crystals of silver that are now coating the copper wire. You can also see that the solution started to turn a little bit blue. Uh, that blue color in the solution is because copper ions are starting to go into the solution, and copper when it's in solution, the ions are uh, a blue color. So these are this is silver coming out of the solution and copper going into the solution. This is a single replacement reaction. Uh, and you can see this one starting to get even larger than when we first started it. If I waited another 20 minutes, it would be like the one I just showed you. Uh, for our next reaction, I already started this one a little bit earlier and it's over here on the hot plate. Uh, this is sodium bicarbonate. Another name for that is baking soda. And the sodium bicarbonate has been heated on a hot plate. This is going to be a decomposition reaction. So you have only one reactant, sodium bicarbonate. And then it's heated. And the heat is going to cause the sodium bicarbonate to be broken down. You can see the sodium bicarbonate has been broken down. The stuff that's left at the bottom is sodium carbonate. And the other products of this reaction are water. You can see the water condensation on the outside or the inside of the Perlmeyer flask. The other product is carbon dioxide. I'm going to take a match right now. And a test for carbon dioxide is that it will put out a flame. So we'll drop a flame in and it puts the flame out. So the flame was extinguished because of the carbon dioxide gas produced during that reaction. Uh, our fifth reaction is going to be between magnesium and oxygen. For this, reaction, for this reaction, we're going to need 
a Bunsen burner. So we'll ignite a Bunsen burner. Okay, so we've got a Bunsen burner. And now we're going to take a piece of magnesium metal. There's a piece of magnesium metal. And we're going to hold that magnesium metal in the flame of the Bunsen burner until it ignites. I'm going to use tongs to do this. So we'll hold it in the Bunsen burner flame until it ignites. And then we'll watch it burn. Okay. And what's left here, that, that white powdery substance, is magnesium oxide. So this is a synthesis reaction between the magnesium metal and the uh, oxygen gas in the atmosphere. And the product was magnesium oxide. Uh, our next reaction will be between lead nitrate and sodium hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, so these are both aqueous solutions. Lead nitrate is uh, soluble in water. Sodium hydroxide also soluble in water. And when we pour these two solutions together, we have a precipitate form. So the two clear solutions made this white cloudy substance at the end, and that solid is kind of slowly settling to the bottom. And that's an example of a precipitation or double replacement reaction. And our seventh reaction is going to be another single replacement reaction. This is hydrochloric acid, and I'm going to drop into the hydrochloric acid a piece of magnesium metal. And the magnesium metal will react with the, the uh, hydrochloric acid. You can see those bubbles forming. Those bubbles that are forming are hydrogen gas. And then the magnesium is slowly dissolving into the solution and becoming magnesium chloride. All right, so you've seen seven reactions. You should be able to predict the products and determine what type of reaction each one was and then write a balanced equation for it.